Good morning, welcome to Greenwood Bonsai Studio today. I'm going to do a couple of demonstrations for you today on an unusual tree, on Eliagnus. Um, I've got a couple of examples, we're going to show you one, a progression through the years, quite interesting tree. And we've got another one we're going to do some trimming and pruning and styling on. But before we do that, yesterday I was teaching another one of my introductory bonsai courses here at Greenwood. And I'm doing another one tomorrow. So we've got an exhibition of trees in here that we lifted in yesterday to show the students on the course. And because we're teaching again tomorrow, they're going to stay in here for tomorrow. So I just thought I'd just show you them with a bit of autumn colour on them while we walk down to the Ellie Agnes trees that we're going to work on. You might have seen some of these trees before if you've followed our videos, but it's nice to see trees at different times of the year when they have different seasonal variations. This is a Deshojo maple of mine, Japanese maple, Ace Palmatum Deshojo. It's in a handmade pot by Sperling Ceramics. In its bright red autumn colour, it's just about to start losing these leaves now because the redness here has just changed to a brown. These are just starting to fall. So we'll probably just get a few more days of autumn colour out this tree to enjoy it. Here we've got a uh, cedar of Lebanon, one of my trees, uh, grown with a rock incorporated here and a dwarf fern. Quite an old tree, nice cracking on the bark now. It's starting to get some age to it down on the lower trunk and around here on the roots. Little fertiliser baskets uh, with Naruko in them. It's been fed with that during the uh, during the season. They can come off soon. And it's in a Warsaw Studio Ceramics bonsai pot. It's uh, got to go in a slightly larger pot next year. I'm going to pot it on and feed it up again. And it's just ready for a little bit of wiring on some of these branches. I've been working on this tree uh, my own collection for about six or seven years now. Here we've got a Japanese larch growing root over rock in a wall soil pot and I think we showed you this in our wall soil pot video and I think at the time I mentioned that it goes a barley colour yellow and when it does it's a beautiful contrast between the needles and the pot. This time of year I've even left all the needles on the surface of the moss. Beautiful autumn display, really nice as it's going into winter. Here we've got a dwarf Catoniaster. You know, in England, the Catoniaster is a common garden tree. And this Microphyllus Catoniaster is a sort of semi evergreen here in the UK, depending on how cold it gets. It will keep some leaves, but it's dropping a few of the old ones. And again, it's nice autumn tones as it drops these old leaves and they go yellow. Siberian Elm, this was a feature of one of the first YouTube videos that we did. And we saw it in, uh, uh, saw images of it in spring and in winter. And here it is in autumn, beautiful yellow leaf against the gray bark. Another little Deshojo maple. This has recently come into stock as a, as a part exchange. So this is just in here showing off a little bit of color as well. And at, at the end here, uh, my trident maple, Ace of Anum, a uh, very, very heavy trunk specimen, dropped all its leaves just a week or two ago. So it's in here to show that off the winter twig effect and the ramification and the twigginess of this tree. The front in here towards you. We can spin it round, it's on the turntable, this one. So you can see the trunk around the back of the tree. Excuse the weeds, just wants tidying up a little bit. We'll spin it round, you can see the, the beauty of the trunk on a heavy trunk tree like this. So that leads us over here to the working area, to a couple of uh, Eliagnus trees. I'll tell you a little bit about these trees. They're both here at, uh, at Greenwood at the moment. Um, this one here on the right is quite an unusual tree. It has a, a quite a story to it, this particular tree. So this was a well-known tree in the UK, owned by quite a prominent uh, bonsai practitioner, a uh, very keen uh, hobbyist. And it was exhibited at a few shows, and it was in this uh, book, Best of British Bonsai, in 2009. So this was an exhibition that was held in Birmingham, UK. And here's a photograph of the tree here, when it was on exhibition. And you can see, 
It was imported from Japan originally, very heavy trunk, Japanese token RMA part. Beautiful tree, very full, informal, upright style. Now here in the UK, we had an absolutely awful winter in 2010. So a year after this was exhibited, we had a crippling winter here where we saw temperatures down to sort of minus 18, minus 12 for a few days. And I know a lot of you might live in colder climates and you think, well, that's kind of normal, but it's not normal for us here. And a lot of trees did suffer and a lot of people, enthusiasts, professionals, bonsai nurseries, we lost a lot of trees that winter. And the owner of this tree, after that winter, all this top died off and the only bit alive was this low branch and it sprouted from this low branch. So he sold the tree to somebody who then sold it to me and I bought it in and I've literally just got a dead trunk here and just one low branch that was alive. And I was doing a bonsai demonstration at a society down in Kent and I took it along to this society in Kent and I wired and shaped this low branch to form that's just the start of a tree to try and resurrect something from what we'd lost from this tree here. That was about, uh, probably about seven years ago that I did that initial styling. Once I'd done it, I did the styling, I bought the tree back to the nursery. One of my regular customers bought it off me and he's now part exchanged it back into me. So it's come back in from him and over the years, this branch that I shaped, this one here, this one here, they've filled out. We've managed to grow this foliage around this right hand side, develop an apex. Also with this original trunk dying off and rotting off, we've got a big hole around this side of the tree. So the story of this tree, it's like a phoenix rising from the ashes. It's been reborn. This is the front in here now, and it's in a handmade bonsai pots and the glaze of this pot look at such what a good job it does to pick up the movement the color the texture in this bark but this tree has been a bit uh it's had its ups and downs and now it's doing really well so from the front in here all this wood here this isn't actually the tree this is the tree that's the original trunk line this wood is, is uh, bog wood that's been placed in here to visually give us this flare at the base and make it, the tree look more impressive. Otherwise, it's got a big hole at this side where the original trunk had rotted away. So admittedly, a little bit sneaky, but that's why we've done it, uh, to help us blend in this side. And I must admit now, when I look at this tree, it's very strange feeling looking at this tree, having known this tree for a number of years. It actually does more for me now, visually, even though this bit's all dead, this bit's been revived. It's got more of a story to it. There's more drama to it. It's showing a bit of the life it's had, the up and down life that it's had. And I would rather, this particular tree, I prefer it like this. I would rather own it like this than own it when it was when it was uh, originally, it was a beautiful tree before, don't get me wrong, but you can't argue, I think it's got more, more character, more history and a bit more interest now. So this has just come in to the, to the nursery as a part exchange and I'm, uh, I think potentially it will stay here as one of our exhibition trees uh, because I worked on it before, uh, it's been really well tended by previous owners and um, now I think we're going to continue to work on it here at Greenwood. But I've got a collection of bonsai trees here, specimen trees, and we use them to exhibit. We put on exhibitions here in the studio when we're teaching, or we take trees to exhibition, uh, exhibitions throughout, throughout Europe. So this might be one of those trees that will now uh, be, uh, be brought into that collection. So we might incorporate this Eliagnus. So but at the moment, I've got another early Agnes that I've been working on for a few years, which is this one here to my, uh, to your right, to my left. So this early Agnes, early Agnes in the UK are quite a common garden tree, a garden shrub. They're a green leaf, you can get variegated leaves, and they've got like a silver underside to the leaf. So 
This is one that I bought from a customer and he was a gardener and he dug it out of a client's garden. So I bought this in uh, about seven years ago. Here's a photograph of when I bought this tree. It was just crammed into like a big, um, big nursery pot, didn't have a lot of roots, didn't have a lot of foliage. So here's a photograph when I first bought it. Then I did an initial styling of it. I got it into a rectangular bonsai pot, just a plastic training pot, and just did this initial styling and shaping. And initially, I styled it with the, um, I think I styled it with that as a front, with the trunk going from right to left, if you look on that photograph. And then a few years later, I was still using that as the front. When it, as it develops, I got it into a bonsai pot. You can see that photograph here. But now as it's developed, I've done a little bit of carving on it. So the other year, I've started to carve this section here. And as I've carved that and given it a bit more interest, I now prefer this as the front of the tree. So the reason I bought this in is to show you two examples. You don't really see any examples of heavy trunk Eliagnus bonsai. So it's very unusual that we're fortunate to show you two good examples of specimen Eliagnus. This one, I haven't done anything to it for a number of, uh, a number of months. I uh, probably trimmed it in spring and then I haven't done anything to it. So obviously it wants to prune back. And the reason this is in here is because if I'm deciding to keep this one here on the nursery as an exhibition tree, then this one is probably going to be offered for sale. So I need to do some work on this one. And then in spring, I can evaluate both of them and decide what I'm doing. Because these are broadleaf evergreen and they keep the leaves, what I tend to do with these Eliagnus is in... Uh, probably late Feb, early March, I cut every leaf off. So it's completely bare. And that allows me to see the structure of the tree and the branches. It allows me to do any pruning for structure. It allows me to do any shaping and wiring at that point. Then it sends out a new set of leaves in the spring. And then they're really nice and small, green and fresh, and they stay on all year. Let me just get a few tools and we'll see what we can do with this tree. So let's just pop that out of the way a little bit and we'll get set up over here. So these very long shoots, you can see the vigour on these trees. They can be often in the UK, they're grown as hedges. So you do see them, uh, it's like an, like an amenity plant, a landscaping plant. They're not an expensive plant to buy. They're quite readily available. You find them an awful lot at, uh, you know, nurseries, landscape suppliers, garden centres. I mean, when they start off with bonsai, they can have quite a large leaf. So one of the battles with them is reducing the size of the leaf. Like I say, I normally leaf cut them in spring. About every other year, I leaf cut them in spring. And then in between years, if I want to get a smaller leaf, I might do a defoliation on them in, uh, in midsummer much as you would do on an Acer, for instance. So I've just given that a little bit of a trim. If we come round here, look, look at this. It's sent this shoot out. It's gone right up through that foliage pad, but it's coming from here, from the trunk. So with a concave pruner, we can snip that off. Another one here, look. Very, very vigorous tree, sending out this sort of growth. And then in with scissors, to just trim back some of these that are slightly less rigorous, just to get these foliage pads back into shape. So I will have an opportunity to do this again in uh, in spring. I'll turn it around here, look. Can you see this shoot here I'm trying to trim? It's coming from right, right down in here. And they do throw shoots just straight out the trunk like this. So you've got to be on top of them to take them back, get rid of this growth. Otherwise it can get a bit too, a bit too overgrown. So just a little bit of a scissor trim at this time of year. Work our way round the foliage pads. They're very easy trees to grow. You know, as a garden tree, they're, they're a garden shrub. 
they're known to uh, to grow in uh, poor soil conditions. So if you've got bad soil, they'll grow very well in it. They don't. Uh, they're quite good at uh, tolerating drought. They don't need a lot of moisture. Most of the ones you see in gardens in the UK tend to be a variegated leaf form that has a yellow variegation on it because I suppose it looks a bit a bit fancier and a bit prettier for if you're going to have it in your garden. Whereas these are a little bit green and boring potentially for garden use but for bonsai they are pretty good. We see some smaller sized ones in the UK and I've seen them in Europe imported from Japan so you do get um, they do grow Ali Agnes in Japan but uh, you know if we were making a if we were making a list of the of the top 100 trees for bonsai I would suggest to you that Ali Agnes wouldn't get wouldn't make the grade it wouldn't be on that top 100 for no fault of its own just because you don't really see many of them around more than anything else but one of the fascinations with bonsai for me is hunting out unusual species and having trees in my collection that are potentially a little bit uncommon you know you know yourself if you're a keen bonsai hobbyist and you spend time looking on youtube there's loads of things on junipers and pines but uh, i suspect this might be the first or one of the few videos that's out there that are talking and dealing and trimming with with Ellie Agnes. So I thought rather than trim it and not show you, we'll show you, talk about it, give you a little bit of an insight into them as a species. And some of you, if you're a beginner, it's worth hunting them out. It's worth having a look for these next time you go to nursery or garden centre. It's worth seeing what you can find. So this is a very heavy trunk example. It's got a little fern grow in here we've just trimmed that back before i started because it's got very long fronds on it at this time of year so giving it a little bit of a prune now and we can go harder back in spring and you see here this carving that we've done up in this section here it's just started to get a little bit of rot and mold in there look so i'm just going to get a little wire brush while it's in here and we're just going to buzz some of that out just to get rid of it. So we use a Makita die grinder with a little wire brush on it. And we'll just get in here and we'll just tickle some of that mould out. And then we can treat that with some wood hardener. just a quick little job in there just tidy that up neaten that up and then we can put some wood hardener on there in future I'm reaching out to up on this carving as well and then we can paint some wood hardener on that as well so that it will all be uh, nice and solid over winter we'll just give it a little uh, a little brush tidy up so a couple of unusual trees there a heavy trunk Ellie Agnes this particular one like I say we've got it to this sort of stage I've been working on this for about seven years since that first photograph was taken when it was just dug out of a out of somebody's garden and then here we've been working on this for about the same sort of time but obviously it's an imported tree 
that's died off and we've sort of we've, it's been a project tree for us to resurrect it and try and make it show worthy again and uh, I think we're we've done a good job of trying to attain that so that it can we, we can have it here and put it out with our exhibition trees and uh, often it will perhaps be out on display if you visit Greenwood Bonsai Studio you can see it out on display and you can enjoy it as as we enjoy it I hope you've enjoyed this video if you have please give us a like and if you haven't already please subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any more upcoming videos on the bonsai that we feature here at Greenwood thank you very much